Be ready. Would you go and run and hide under the bed? Amen. I thank the Lord for saving me. And I thank him for not just leaving me where I was. I thank him that he changed me. You know, I, uh, I dealt with anger a lot of my years. I was just so angry and resentful and bitter. But he changed that. And I'm not saying I don't ever get angry today. But I know who I can go to. I know who my peace comes from. I know when I get angry, I can call out to the Lord. Amen. And Amen. 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 Prepare the heart for the preaching of the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Can't build much of a church just on singing, but you can't build much of one without it. Amen. 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 That's why I have them sing. I'll let them do the singing, I'll do the preaching. Amen. Amen. Habakkuk chapter number one. And when you find the good book of Habakkuk chapter number one, we're going to start in verse number one. Ready? Here we go. The burden which Habakkuk, the prophet, did see. O Lord, how long shall I cry? And thou wilt not hear. Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not say. You ever hear anybody say in today's time, well, why would you believe in a God that allows this crime to take place? Why would God allow this dear, sweet, innocent woman to get harmed? Why would God allow a child to die? Number two, Habakkuk says, now this is a prophet, okay? He said, oh Lord, how long shall I cry and thou will not hear? He's basically saying, God, I'm crying out to you, but you're not even listening. He said, even cry out unto thee of violence and thou will not save. You ever pray? You pray for somebody in a bad situation. Maybe you pray somebody that's diseased, somebody with cancer, different things, and you pray, and you pray, and you pray, and you pray. You pray for God to save somebody, and you pray, and you pray, and you pray. 
and it seems like God is just ignoring you. I have. Verse number three. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slight, and judgment doth never go forth. They're not going to get what they deserve. I just don't understand why Habakkuk's not preached from much anymore. Hmm. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. That means they go around and compass the righteous. That means they're just having a big old shindig and we're stuck in, 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 we're in the valley. Therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. They're running around getting their ways. And we're the ones going through the hard times. That's what he's saying. He said in verse 5, Behold ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days, which you will not believe, though it be told you. For though I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs, they are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. Their horsemen shall spread themselves. Their horsemen shall come from far. They shall fly as the eagle that hasteth to eat. They shall come all for violence. Their faces shall sup up. That means they're going to eat the evening meal. They're going to have supper. As the east wind, and they shall gather the captivity as the sand. They shall scoff at the kings, the princes shall be a scorn unto them. They shall deride every stronghold. That means they're going to ridicule or make fun of them. Every stronghold, for they shall heap dust and take it. Then shall his mind change. He shall pass over and offend, imputing his power unto his God. Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord, my God, mine holy one? We shall not die, O Lord. Thou hast ordained them for judgment. And, O mighty God, thou hast established them for correction. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore, lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously, and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devoureth a man that is more righteous than he? And makest men as the fishes of the sea, as the creeping things that have no ruler over them. They take up all of them with the angle. That word angle is like a hook, a line used for fishing. They catch them in their net and gather them in their drag. That's like a drag net. Therefore they rejoice and are glad. Therefore they sacrifice unto their net, burn incense unto their drag, because by them their portion is fat, that means abundant, and their meat plenteous. They got a lot of food to eat. Shall they therefore empty their net and not spare continually to slay the nation? Chapter number three. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet upon Shinnah. Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years, in the midst of the years make known. In wrath, remember mercy. Lord, we do thank you so much for this day you've blessed us with. And Father, we do come before you in Jesus' name. Lord, we want to thank you this morning that we do serve a thrice holy God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blessings of God in our life. And Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come before you this morning. Father, it's been said by many dear saints of God. Why? Why, Lord? Why? I pray, God, that you'd help us to look at the scriptures this morning. And Father, I pray that you'd help heavy hearts today. I pray that you'd lighten burdens. I pray, Lord, that you'd encourage the discouraged. Lord, we do pray that you would most of all receive all the honor, glory, and praise for everything that's done this Lord's Day. Help us to worship you with our hearts in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' precious and holy name, 
Amen. 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 Book of Habakkuk is a very rare book to be preached from, really a rare book to be taught from. When Habakkuk was penning by inspiration of the Holy Ghost, uh, it was against a backdrop of apostasy, if you will. Uh, apostasy is basically turning away from the truth, which would be the word of God and embracing a lie. We see that in our very nation today. Amen. Amen. Can I get a witness? You know I'm telling the truth. It's, it's also apostasy, but it's also unbelievable hardship. Now, the timeline of the writing of Habakkuk, it was written during a time when Jehoiakim was the king of Judah. He led the people back into idolatry mm -hmm. and away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. As a result, God is preparing to judge the nation. Many of you are, are familiar with the youngest king that was uh, mentioned in the Old Testament, that being Josiah. Uh, after Josiah was king, there was not another godly king after him. All the rest of them were wicked. They led the nation into idolatry. Now, as a result of the nation of God's people turning into idolatry, turning to apostasy, turning away from the truth and embracing the lie, God is about to take them to the proverbial woodshed. He's about to judge them. Habakkuk is a prophet, and he's having trouble understanding why God, as we mentioned in chapter number one, God is going to take a heathen, idolatrous, God-hating nation like Babylon, and he's going to use them to punish his people. He can't understand why God doesn't just purge the nation's sins and draw them back to himself. Why is he going to do this Instead of that, it doesn't make sense to Habakkuk. You with me? Amen. Habakkuk, a lot of similarities to a few other good men of God, and we may look at that as well. Kind of reminds me of Job a little bit. He's arguing his case before God, but in the end, he's going to realize that God is not to be worshipped merely because he gives us what we want. He is to be worshipped regardless of our circumstances. Amen. Okay? Amen. Faith, faith is the key. Amen. By faith, you must trust him. By faith, you must believe that he, he, he is who he is, who he says he is, and he's going to do what he promised he would do. Did he not promise that he would take care of us? Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to look at that. And there's some key words. And, and chapter number three is where we'll end up. And we won't really look at chapter number one that much. We're going to look mainly at the end of chapter number three, Lord willing. But I do want you to understand that Habakkuk is not disrespecting God, per se. He addresses God eloquently. He calls him, oh God, holy God, my God. Basically, he just doesn't understand. Habakkuk doesn't know what to do. So I'd like to preach this morning but what to do. When you just don't understand. Amen. So the first thing you need to do when you just don't understand is you need to look at Habakkuk chapter number 3 and look with me in verse number 17 and 18. Now, you got to understand that Habakkuk is speaking about the sovereignty of God. So the first thing you need to know when you don't understand, when you don't know why, when you don't know what to do, you got to understand God is a sovereign God. That means God is in control of every situation. He's in control of every circumstance. He's in control of every minute detail of your life. Now, circumstances change, but God does not. Amen. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is still God. Now, verse number 17, Habakkuk 3. Although, that word although is very key. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine. The labor of the oil shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. There shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Now, you see that word Lord in verse number 18. It should be capitalized L-O-R-D. That is Jehovah God. Literally, by definition, that means the self-existent, the eternal, the changeless, the covenant-keeping God, the I am of the universe. Amen. That is the one that we can depend on in desperate times, in hopeless situations. 
He is still God and we can trust in Him. Amen. That's what that word Lord means in verse number 18. Habakkuk says in verse 17, I open up my cupboards and there's no grits in there. Amen? Amen. I go out to my car and I got no fuel in my car. I go and answer the mail in my mailbox and all I have is medical bills. I go inside and I get a phone call from a doctor saying I've got an uncurable disease. Everything seems hopeless. All seems lost in verse 17. He says, no meat, but everything is failing. Fig trees, no fruit. Everything is gone. All seems lost. Verse 18, yet I will joy in the God of my salvation. The reason he can joy, the reason he can rejoice is because he realizes that God is still alive and well and he is on the throne and he knows very well what's going on. Amen. God knows that they have removed the Ten Commandments from in front of the courthouse. He knows they have taken prayer out of school. He knows that there are wicked, wicked leaders across the board in Washington. He knows what's going on in your home. He knows what's going on in your life. He knows what's going on in your children's life. He knows what's going on inside of your body. And friends, I'm going to tell you it'll be a glorious day in your life and it'll bring joy bells in your soul when you realize that God has not forgotten you God loves you, God cares for you and better than that, God knows what's going on in your life Amen. nothing catches God off guard and it'll help you and it'll help me when we just submit to his lordship and say you are a sovereign God, you're in control of everything friends, the very hairs on her head, the very hairs on your head God is in control. Amen. God knows. Amen. You think God doesn't know? You think God doesn't care? And God, God wants you to turn to him. He said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Amen. Amen. So first off, you need to embrace that he's a sovereign God. That's what you do. Amen. Amen. Lord, Jehovah, self-existent one. He's in control of every situation. Look with me in Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. This will help us if we'll embrace it, if we'll accept it. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. Isaiah, another prophet, said this, by inspiration of the Holy Ghost, he said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God's ways are not our ways. God is sovereign. He is orchestrating affairs in your life, in my life, around the world, everywhere, all at once. He is, he is total of everything. He knows. Amen. He understands. Amen. And Isaiah the prophet said, you must embrace this truth. His ways are not our ways, and we're not going to understand it with this carnal mind. We cannot. We have to embrace that he's sovereign. He's in control. Nothing happened. Oh, God, why? You need to understand and not say, God, why did you let this happen? But pray and say, God, would you help me to get through this? Amen. Amen. Okay? Isaiah said his ways are not our ways. Friends, he is a holy God. Amen. We cannot comprehend and understand what he's doing. Amen. Now, that's what Isaiah said. We don't understand his plan, but we need to trust that he has the best plan. Amen. Okay? He has it all. Now, he's God. He's always God. He's always been God. He's always going to be God. So you'll, you'll come to a great point and place in your life, spiritually speaking, when you embrace the fact that he's just a sovereign God. Okay? Amen. Now, secondly, you got to understand that not only is he sovereign, you got to understand that his salvation, his salvation is enough. You ready? Look at verse 18 with me again, chapter number 3. Habakkuk said, verse 17 and 18 is one sentence, by the way, okay? The first part of the sentence, everything all is lost. The fig tree shall not blossom, 
No fruit in the vines, the labor of the oil shall fail, the field shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off, there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. There are going to be things in our life that are going to cause us to shake and to go back and forth as far as our relationship to the Lord. Amen. Okay? When you're down, when you're drowning, and you barely got your head above water, you're not very spiritual at times. I know I'm not. Amen. Life is going to toss you to and fro. There's going to be things that happen that we don't understand that just do not make sense. You ever had one of those days? You ever had one of those weeks? You ever had one of those months? You ever had one of those years where it just seems like positively every single thing in your life stinks? Amen. <laughs> Everything goes wrong. Amen. You're late for work, you go out and you got a flat tire, or your car won't start, your battery's dead. You get halfway to work, something happens to your vehicle. Amen. You go and get milk out of the refrigerator like the preacher does sometimes late at night, and the kids have drank all the milk, and I can't eat my cocoa pebbles. <laughs> I mean, and you stump your toe on your way back. I mean, it just seems like one thing. It's like a domino effect. Everything's going wrong in your life. You ever have, am I the only one that has those times? No. Do y'all have them too? I it, it seems like the best thing to do would be just to go back to bed, but you can't. Amen. <laughs> Because you're too stressed, you can't sleep. <laughs> Am I the only one that does that? <laughs> Verse 18 of Habakkuk 3. Habakkuk said, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. That word salvation applies to more than just the soul. It literally means by definition, deliverance and rescue. Do you know what that tells the preacher this morning? That tells me. And tells you that this world is not my home. Amen. Amen. Abraham said, friends, I'm just a pilgrim passing through. He said he was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. If you have planted your roots down in this world, you're going to be heartbroken. You're going to be distraught. You're going to be stressed. If you're trying to build up a mansion here on this earth, you're never going to be happy. Amen. Amen. Amen, friends. We're just passing through. Amen. Amen. It's going to be all over soon. Hallelujah. In the sweet by and by, child. Our life is going to be like a vapor, Brother Bill, one day. Soon you're going to get some new eyes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. God has been good to us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Those that we've stood by their graveside and said goodbye to, hallelujah. That's just not, that's a see you later. Amen. Praise Amen. God, friends. Amen. This world is carnal. This world is wicked. I'm happy that I'm not bound for this earth. I am heaven bound with a hammer down. Amen. 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 I've been washed in the blood. Let me rejoice. Amen. He said, I'm going to joy in the God of my salvation. We're headed to a better land. Praise God. God has been good to us. Now, the beautiful thing here, Habakkuk is turning to from the word of God and he's embracing it. That's what we need to do in bad situations. That's what we need to do whenever things don't ha happen, circumstances happen, out of our control, we can't do anything about. You can't get a prescription for. You can't pay your way out of. You're absolutely, positively, 100% helpless, and the only thing you can do is look up. Amen. Amen. That's what Habakkuk did right here. He does not understand. God, why would you do this? I don't understand. God, why won't you do it this way? But whenever he gets to chapter number three, instead of trying to negotiate with God, instead of trying to have a, you know, a, a discourse with God, he's trying to get with God. When he comes to chapter number three, by the way, he's been praying through most of this. Amen. Did you see the beginning of chapter number three? Prayer. What did he say? A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet. You know what to do. That's when you fall on your knees and you ask God what to do. Amen. Amen. God may not change your circumstance, but he can change your perspective. Amen. That's what he does to Habakkuk because Habakkuk is just being honest with God and he's just saying, God, I don't understand what you're doing. I don't understand what you're telling me to do. This makes no sense. You ever been there before? 
We don't deserve this treatment. That's what he's saying. And you know what's going to happen? The exact same thing that God told him was going to happen in chapter number one is what's going to happen regardless of what Habakkuk said to him. Amen. Now, you can do this with God. You can come to a fork road. And you can go down this way of bitterness, arguing and complaining with God every step of the way. Or by love and submission and trust, choose his way, knowing he's going to love and take care of you every step of the way. Amen. Amen. That's the path Habakkuk chose to do. Amen. When you come to a point in place... Where things just seem, it seems like you're that little boy on Charlie Brown and you got that little cloud following you all the way around. Amen. 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 And everything seems to be bad. <laughs> if you're a child of God, there's one thing that you can do you can rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and that you are going to heaven to spend an eternity with God. Amen. Amen. What to do when you don't know what to do, do what Habakkuk did. Lastly this morning, in Habakkuk chapter number 3, we see in verse 19, the Bible said, the Lord God, Habakkuk the prophet said, and he's following up. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. He said, the Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hind's feet. <laughs> hind's feet. Female deer in and after their third year. Hind's feet. Climb up into high places. Thirdly this morning, when you don't know what to do, you got to understand God's sovereign. God's a God of salvation, and you've got to understand that God's strength never weakens. Amen. Amen. Okay, verse 19. The Lord God, Jehovah God, the self-existent God, the God is in control of everything in my life, your life, and the world, is my strength. If he be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Now, the word strength here in this verse means ability. Our strength spiritually does not lie within us. The Lord is our strength. Amen. A very present help in time of trouble. When we're unable to stand, he enables us to stand. When we can't go on, he goes on with us and for us. When we're in the deep valley, of course, according to verse number 19, the Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like hind's feet, and he will make me to walk upon mine high places. He's the only God that can take you out of the valley and put you on the mountaintop. Yes, even in a bad situation. Amen. Hind's feet. Friends, that's grace. High places. That's the mountaintops where deers go to escape danger from beneath. Habakkuk the prophet is telling us God enables us to rise above, amen, even our circumstances and gives us the strength. An old preacher said, God turns my doubts to shouts. <laughs> amen. Amen. Psalm 13, the psalmist said in verse 1 to the chief musician of Psalm of David, How long will thou forget me, O Lord? Does that sound familiar? Look at Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 2 again. I hope you know the place. If not, I'll read it for you. Oh Lord, how long shall I cry? Amen. The psalmist said, how long will thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall mine enemy be exalted That's an expression of despair in verse 1 through 2. 3 and 4 is an expression of prayer. The same thing Habakkuk does. 
Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death, lest mine enemies say I have prevailed against him. Those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Verse 5. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I think David knew a little something about prayer, don't you? Amen. Amen. And meditation. Every time you see that word selah in Psalms, it means to stop and meditate on what God just said. Mm. I think David knew a little something about that. Amen. Mm. The similarities are obvious. You've got a psalmist, David, a man after God's own heart. And a prophet Habakkuk that God is speaking to concerning the coming judgment of the people of Judah. And situations happen in both their lives. Different situations, different circumstances, but it's all trouble and despair. Mm. But he's the same God on the mountaintop as he is in the valley. Amen. You're going through things different than I'm going through, but we're all going through things. And he's the same God that's going to get us through. Amen. 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 I was raised in a church. I, my mother and father raised me there. My mother and father and my sister. I was taken into that church as a newborn. And I went every Sunday, mostly my entire life. I was a good, moral, religious person. And that's what I was basing my salvation on. Mm. One day, my pastor, the one that preaches Revival Force in September, met me in town. I was 33 years old, still going to church. And he gave me a gospel track, Miss Lynn. And in that gospel track is known as the Romans Road to Salvation. Some of you are familiar with it. Amen. And when I read those verses in Romans, and it told me that I was born a sinner, that I needed to confess my sins, and with my heart, I needed to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. I got very upset and mad. Because I thought I was a pretty good guy. And the Bible was telling me that I wasn't. Amen. In here. Amen. And God's word started troubling me. Well, around about September 1st, 2005, I was at work. And all of a sudden, it felt like the floor under me was removed. And I was going to burn in hell for eternity. Hmm. And God said, you've never humbled yourself and confessed to me that you're a sinner and that you need to be saved. Mm. And I went home, and I went to the back bedroom of my house, and I shut the door. And I got down on my knees right by my bed. I could take you to the exact spot. It's about 2.14 in the afternoon. <laughs> and I said, Lord, I'm a sinner, and I repent of my sins, and I'm asking you to save me. And on September 1st, 2005, the God, the self-existent God, Jehovah God, the same God that created everything that you see on this earth and in the universe, heard my prayer Amen. and came to the back bedroom of my house and saved me by his grace. Amen. And for 14 years, I have not been a perfect child of God, but I have been a persistent child of God. Amen. <laughs> God called me to preach in one of the first books of the Bible that I exegeted. That means I went through and studied word by word, verse by verse, in its context, was the book of Habakkuk. Mm. Don't ask me why. That's just where God led me. Wow. And, and I think I know why. Because every trial, every tribulation, every valley, every circumstance that happens in my life that is negative, that I don't understand... I'm brought to Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 18. Yeah. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Amen. When it seems like all is lost, when it seems like nothing is good in your life, rain, clouds, everything's just great, there's one thing I can count on. I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. I'm going to joy in the God of my salvation because I know I'm a child of God. I'm purchased by His blood. I'm not perfect, but I'm purchased. And I'm going to tell you that I am longing for him, not hour by hour, I'm longing for him second by second. Amen. Amen. We sang that song in as well, my soul, 
Friends, it is well with my soul right now because I know I got a home in glory. And despite what happens in this world, nothing can take verse 18 from me. Amen. 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 I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And I love him today. And God's been good to me. You hear me? Amen. 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 I got things in my life. I got reminders on my iPad oh. this end that I look at. And I think this coming week I got to do it. I'm thinking, oh, Lord. <laughs> Ooh. Right now, I'm telling you, I can rejoice. I got joy bells ringing in my heart today because I know I'm saved by the good grace of God. Amen. Amen. If you've gotten him in your heart, you can rejoice today too. Amen. 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 The key there is if you have him in your heart. Amen. If you don't, you ain't got much to rejoice about. Amen. Some people get nervous about rejoicing. I like it. Amen. Because I know what I do in here with him. Amen. Hey, I got a song this morning. Hallelujah. Nobody can take that away from me. Though the enemy rages, I still got a song. Amen. Miss Nancy's come to play a song invitation. I hope the Lord's spoken to your heart like he has mine. I love this little book. Three chapters. Short book. One of the rarest books in the Bible to preach from. But oh, isn't that beautiful? Verse number 18 and 19. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. I pray the Lord spoke into your heart this morning. No matter what you're going through, and I know everybody in here this morning is going through something, you can rejoice in the Lord today. You can joy in the God of your salvation. Amen. Amen. Or maybe God spoke into your heart and you don't have reason to rejoice today. The beautiful thing is you can Amen. Amen. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Amen. Amen. A lot of folks say, what's all this saving business you're talking about? The Bible said in the book of Matthew, Jesus came to save his people from their sins. Amen. 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 If you think you don't need to be saved, you never thought you need to be saved, guess what? You need to be saved. Amen, <laughs> Amen on that. However, God's dealt with your heart this morning. Our altars are open. Amen. Amen.